it's actually easiest to answer part B first. Why is that? Well, the ball is doing this. It's coming up and then coming back down again. At this particular moment, right at the top of the arc, we will be able to sort of insert some idea, knowledge here. That is that Vy, the vertical component of velocity, is zero. Remember that the speed is constantly changing in, uh, in the y direction. This is Vx. This is Vy. Initially, Vy is positive, and Vx is off the side like that. And Vy is shrinking as we go up the arc, and then eventually getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we go down the arc again, but in the opposite direction. At this particular moment, Vy is actually equal to zero. It's just like when we launch a ball straight up in the air, it goes like that. It's going up here, but the, the, the vertical component of velocity is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It's zero, and then it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but in the opposite, in the negative direction. So we can insert that particular piece of knowledge here that Vy at that time, whatever that time is, is equal to zero. So we'll say zero equals V naught in the y direction plus A Y T. And now we have a lot of unknowns here. We have to fill in for what V naught in the y direction is, the vertical initial component of velocity and the acceleration in the y direction. Let's go back to our picture. Um, the ball was launched at some speed, V naught, at an angle theta. So this initial vertical or y component of velocity is v naught times sine of theta. If this is v naught. This is v naught y. This is v naught x, and that's theta. So v naught y is the vertical component of this vector. The acceleration in the y direction is minus g. And now I have a simple expression, v naught sine theta minus gt is zero, or the time that it spends going up, it's just that. Now that's not quite the answer to part b, that's the time spent to go up, in other words to get the top of the arc. It has to fall back down again, and actually that takes the same amount of time, so I need to actually multiply. Uh, by 2, and that's the time that the ball will be in the air. So this is the answer for part B. We'll need to remember that a little bit further along.